right. Hello, everyone. Always so glad to be here with you to share some ideas and some knowledge and some fun things that have come up in the industry. And today we're going to be, let me just share my screen with you. Give me a moment. All right. So today we're talking about aesthetic pros making their place in the sanitation business too. So this is about increasing the health of our aesthetic business through risk management. My name is Gail Prechtel and my company is New Med Concepts. This is my contact information, so please feel free anytime, reach out to me if you have any questions, comments, I love to hear feedback and I'm here to help you in any way that I can. There's my contact information, phone number, email, you can text me, whatever's easier for you. You can also visit my website and there'll be a lot of other classes and uh, webinars and blogs that uh, hopefully you'll find very interesting as well. So this year has brought us the pandemic and with the pandemic, it brings a lot of changes. We've all experienced so many changes in, in our home life, in our business, in society. Um, but with all of those changes, it also has brought us new innovations. So some of the challenges that we've faced, the cool thing is that new innovations have come up to help us with some of these challenges. So these are some of the things that I wanted to talk with you about today. And Skin Inc. Magazine, I'm sure quite a few of you see this magazine, and they came out with this statement. So I, I wanted to read this. A number of state cosmetology boards are cracking down on cleanliness regulations, as are the United States Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, and the Center for Con Disease Control, which is also known as the CDC. Many of these governmental entities are various industrial or industry organizations that provide updated guidelines to ensure spas remain germ-free and success-driven. Those that succeed in doing that can benefit from marketing themselves as a clean experience for our clients. So that's gonna be a focus today, is how we can improve on that experience for our clients. So the spa business has pivoted. Sanitation has always been a big part of our business. I don't know any other industry that spends so much time learning and following guidelines and learning all the rules and regulations of sanitation. I think we do a fantastic job of that more than any other businesses out there. But now we've really had to hone in on sanitation and we're looking at things a little bit differently now than we have in the past. Also, the cost has gone up for us. You know, having to disinfect between every client, using more cleaning aids, providing gloves and masks for our clients. And also the time that we used to have for clients has been diminished. Uh, it takes more time in between cleaning and disinfecting. And so some of us have had to cut down the amount of clients that we, we see every day. So that's also not only do we have an expense out going for extra sanitation and extra efforts and materials, but we also um, have, are taking less clients. So we're not bringing in as much money. And obviously health and safety are number one. You know, that is a priority. And we are in the health business, the wellness business. And it's very important not only to protect the public, but also ourselves. And, and what we do in our environment, in our spa environment, we're also bringing home to our family and our loved ones. So it's very important for our staff and ourselves to take care of ourselves too. And self-care isn't selfish. This is all part of of helping each other stay as healthy as possible. So how do we adapt in this heightened awareness and, and making it more profitable for our business? 
Part of this is what we call risk management. So what exactly is risk management? And this was a, an example uh, from the dictionary. It is a noun, but it's forecasting the evaluation of financial risks together with the identification of procedures to avoid or minimize their impact. So we're trying to minimize the risk that's involved. So the first step in assessing the risk is to identify it. Now we can consult with an attorney and the state board regarding state laws and regulations. And there really are no national standards governing the ownership and operation and licensing and training and credentialing or even the level of supervision state by state. So some things that we've already considered that you may, but it, it, uh, it helps in kind of reviewing these things, you know, in, is our insurance considerations. So obviously you all have general liability, uh, commercial property insurance, business ownership policies, workers' compensation for some of you that, that have staff, an umbrella insurance, cyber insurance, that's becoming very big now, uh, a lot more hacking going on than ever, I think especially since we're all going online and our businesses are turning more online, there's more line uh, cyber attacks too. So these are all insurances that we take into consideration. And just a few examples, what also contributes to the risk in a spa. Dim lighting, somebody walks in and they're you know, fumbling around. Uh, we, we want it in a relaxed environment, but it, the dim lighting can also be a hazard too. Slippery floors, unsuitable or untrained staff that can cause issues, problems, candles, fire hazards, even the food and beverages not properly stored and prepared. And now we even have to think more about that. Um, there are certain regulations and guidelines that have been handed down, depending on the state, about being able to offer food and beverages in the spa. Inadequate structural and mechanical supports, no policies in place in the event of an incident. That's something sometimes we don't think about what happens if there is an incident. You do need policies in place for that and of course, effective sanitation. And that's gonna be one of our focuses today is on that effective sanitation. Our focus is also on profit and risk management, increasing the health of your business, in particular, the sanitation. So obviously, you know, we all know, when you have a healthier workplace, you're going to have a healthier staff. When you have a healthier workplace, your clients are happier. And when you have a healthier workplace, you will see overall that your profits start increasing. So some of the things that we can think about in a healthier workplace is offering healthier choices in the way of food, drinks, snacks. I think we've all done a good job of that in the spa industry. Um, Long ago are the days of you know, coffee and donuts. Now we're providing much more healthier snacks for our clients, better lighting to help reduce eye strain. You can take more stretch breaks, you know, offering your staff stretch breaks in between, just taking that five minutes out to stretch and refresh. Vacations, offering vacation time. It is important, we get so busy and it's important to have a little bit of downtime for yourself to stay healthy and happy and taking vacations. Quality air control. This is a big one now too. You know, with this airborne illnesses, we re really want to make sure that the quality of our air is clean and fresh. Offering services for stress reduction. We do that in uh, many of your treatments. We're offering our clients uh, a number of different ways to help de-stress and relax. And reducing that risk by reducing the harmful spread of microorganisms. Now, OSHA is a national association. It's governed under the Act in the Department of Labor. And their laws supersede any state laws and any state cosmetology board guidelines. So it was enacted 
back, the Health and Safety Act was uh, enacted back in 1970. And they have strict preventative procedures to prevent the spread of infectious agents. And it's now a law. So the Act 29 USC 655 minimizes occupational exposure to hepatitis B, HIV, and other bloodborne pathogens. And OSHA has made a determination that employees face significant health risks as a result of occupational exposure of bloodborne pathogens and other potential infectious materials which may contain bloodborne pathogens. So that was the beginning of really cracking down on, on our health and safety in the workplace uh, with infectious uh, germs. And state plans are required to have standards and enforcement programs that are at least as effective as OSHA's, and they may have different or more stringent requirements. So depending on what state that you live in, you, you do need to check with your state board and compare how their regulations are with OSHA's regulations. And employers must also protect their workers from exposure to hazardous chemicals. And we're seeing that more and more now because these hazardous chemicals are used in cleaning and disinfecting. So as we're trying to offer better cleaning and disinfecting, we're also contaminating and, and creating more hazardous chemicals in our environment. So employers should be aware that common sanitizers and sterilizers could contain hazardous chemicals. Where workers are exposed to hazardous chemicals, employers must comply with OSHA's hazard communication standard. So how is that affecting the spas? OSHA standard does not include information on the risks of bloodborne pathogens directly to the cosmetology profession. So under the standard, it is res the responsibility of the employer to evaluate the potential for contact of blood and other potentially infectious material among his or her own employees. If determined to exist, then he or she must provide all the protectors or protections of the exposed employees, including training, vaccinations, and personal protective equipment. So you need to be able to supply all these things for your employees. So some things to consider. In the CDC guidelines, the CDC categorizes hospital and healthcare facility surfaces into three main levels of risk. You have your critical, your semi-critical, and your non-critical. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the non-critical. And your non-critical surfaces are defined as your typical housekeeping surfaces. So anything that you would be cleaning during your normal housekeeping. Also included any medical equipment services, like your chairs and your implements. Pathogens residing on non-critical surfaces in the past were largely ignored. They didn't pay a whole lot of attention to those. But contaminants residing on non-critical surfaces contribute to the perpetuation of microbial reservoir. In other words, microorganisms are building up on all of our surfaces, our non-critical surfaces, and that's creating a potential problem in the transfer of germs. So just think about it. Think about your spa, think about your environment and all the high touch areas. Those, those are considered non-critical areas, like your door handles, your locks, the door frame itself, when you're going in and out of a door, all of your cabinets, everything that you're touching along the way, all of your products, your brushes. What, what are you touching in the treatment room? What are you touching in the reception area, in the checkout area? The laptops, the phones, obviously those are big ones, but then the, the, the surfaces, your desk surfaces, turning your light switches on and off. These are all very high touch areas in your spa that you're constantly touching and the potential of transferring 
more germs to these non-critical areas. So your methods for cleaning and disinfecting of non-critical surfaces are being scrutinized more. And our current guidelines suggest two types, two, two processes. So you're basically, you're cleaning. You need to get the dirt and grime layer off. And so you're cleaning and then you're actually disinfecting the area with a, a proper disinfectant. So your disinfectants, examples of these would be biocides. So biocides are chemical agents, such as a pesticide, that is capable of destroying living organisms. So the definition of a biocide is any chemical that destroys life by poisoning, in particular like a, a, pep, a pesticide, an herbicide, a fungicide, they're poisoning. Most of what happens is these microorganisms actually ingest, like your bleach, your cavicide, your wavicide, um, your biocides, they're ingesting them. And sometimes they, they become sick and then they die. Sometimes they get sick, but they don't die. They actually morph and mutate and get stronger. And that's where we're creating superbugs. So that is a, a potential problem. But almost all of the biocide active substances have a very relatively high toxicity to them. Biocides are intended to kill living organisms. Many biocidal products pose significant risk to human health and welfare. And great care is required when handling biocides and the appropriate protective clothing must be worn like your eye goggles and gloves and protective clothing should be used while preparing these biocides to be used. The use of biocides can also have a significant adverse effect on your natural environment. So it is important, it's very important to clean and to disinfect to reduce the bio load of germs. But what if we had something to protect in between cleaning and disinfecting? Something that would keep the bio load from building up so quickly. Something that was longer lasting and had an antimicrobial, uh, a, a longer lasting active antimicrobial effect to reduce the spread of microorganisms in between the cleanings. And that is the missing link. What's missing from the current CDC protocols? This is exactly what we're gonna be talking about. There is a missing link. There's a safe, non-leaching, non-toxic, durable antimicrobial that imparts a residual antimicrobial onto surfaces in between your cleanings to help continue to give active results a technology that acts as a clinical tool while helping to increase eff effectiveness, a technology that can be relied upon as a valuable piece of the strategy in the reduction of non-critical surface contamination to more acceptable levels. And now there is an alternative. So I was very excited to talk about this today. There is an antimicrobial technology that provides a long-term control of microbial growth on treated surfaces. The company's Clearstream developed Penetrex. It's an antimicrobial technology that takes a totally unique approach. After the surface has been cleaned and disinfected, then Penetrex is applied. It's a liquid that you can apply to the surface, and it acts to provide long-term control of microbial growth on treated surfaces. This durable bacterial static finish transforms virtually every substrate into an antimicrobial surface. This treatment helps to reduce microbial transmission 
between scheduled cleanings and disinfection, and it's EPA registered. So what's the difference between disinfection and this residual technology? Now with ClearStream's technology, it's a residual protection between your cleanings. It lasts for hours, days, even weeks. Now your current biocides like your chlorine, your, um, there's different types of biocides like your chlorine bleach, formaldehyde, aldehydes, quaternium, ammoniums, chlorhexidine, sodium hydroxide, phenols. These do not offer any type of residual protection whatsoever. When those products are laid down, when you wipe a surface off to treat and disinfect a surface, it helps to kill that bacteria and microorganisms but then immediately the bio load starts again. If I touch the surface or cough and sneeze, it would be contaminated immediately all over again. But with the ClearStream technology, you're gonna see in a moment when that's laid down, it continues to protect. So this is an example of treating the surfaces. Okay, this is like a little chart that, that helps to show you uh, an example of microbial growth on untreated surfaces. So let's say we've cleaned and now we're coming in and we're disinfecting. So where these little green arrows are that say safe, we've come in and we've treated the surface down to a safe level. The yellow is indicated the microbial growth that occurs between disinfecting. So let's say right here we started at the beginning and we disinfected and so now we're down to a very safe level. But then within minutes and hours, the microbial growth starts, starts to, the bio load starts to collect and it starts to grow and we reach levels that are back up to dangerous levels then we come back in and we treat again, bringing it back down to a safe level. And then as soon as we've done that, immediately afterwards, the bio load starts to build up again and we reach dangerous levels. And then we go ahead back, we disinfect, we treat and so on. So you're constantly you know, going up and these, these bio loads are increasing, microorganisms are multiplying uh, rapidly and we're exposing our employees, our, our work products, our food, and the public to the potential risk of cross-contamination in between cleaning. Now what the ClearStream product does, this is an example of showing microbial growth on surfaces treated with SaberTech as a brand name of one of their products or Penetrex. Uh, but the ClearStream technology has been applied after cleaning, after proper cleaning and disinfecting, you still have to clean and disinfect, but then you lay down this antimicrobial. And you can see here from the graph that you have very safe, it stays in the safe level. You never get these big spikes of antimicrobial growth because it's constantly working on the surface. So these levels are held to a much safer level, reducing the colonization of microorganisms and helping to prevent a biofilm buildup between your disinfecting cycles. The probability of cross-contamination from the surfaces to food, to humans, animals, is dr dramatically reduced. So here's an overlay showing you the difference. If you, if you remember when you come in and you disinfect and then that the microorganisms start building up very quickly and reaching these dangerous levels, then we have to bring it back down again, disinfect. Here is the overlay showing when you're using the Penetrex products, the ClearStream products, that the microbial growth between disinfection events is immediately recognizable. You can see that it's really reducing dramatically. 
in between, in between your cleanings. So it's delivering residual protection that continues working long after the environmental staff has gone home. If I was to come in, if I, I disinfected at night before I left, the microorganisms can continue to build up overnight and I have to come in and I have to disinfect once again. This with the ClearStream products, you can see just continues to keep at a safer level. So this technology, it's an antimicrobial technology and it's formulated from a silane quaternary ammonium or a QAS. And that's its basic chemistry platform. So it's an active antimicrobial barrier that bonds to any, any surface, any inorganic or organic substrate or surface for long-term protection with a bacterial static finish. This is the microbe um, itself. This is showing on a microscopic level how this is working. So most things are negatively charged in our environment. So your microorganisms are negatively charged and this particular molecule that creates the Penetrex products, the molecule is positively charged. And you can see here, it almost kind of looks like a sword. So it has a silane base and it has a long molecular chain, nitrogen chain, and it looks like a sword. Or, and when, let's say this is your microorganism, these little green balls or microorganisms, they come in contact with it, it actually lyses it or spears the microorganism, and it creates an electromagnetic charge. So it's literally electrocuted, and it completely disables it. Unlike a lot of your poisons that the microorganism has to ingest, and then it can get sick and die, and sometimes it just gets sick and then it recovers, with this, you've got the complete kill. Here's another graphic that just short, sort of shows you how it's looking on a surface. Say I wiped this table with the ClearStream product. This gives you a very simple view of the cross-linking of the molecules, like little swords all over the table so that when microorganisms land on this, they're pierced and it creates that electro charge and disables the microorganism. Here it is again, just showing how the positive charge of this non-leaching molecule attracts bacterial, fungal, and viral contaminants and helps to lyse it. And this was actually done with a special atomic force microscope. So there's so many clinical studies behind this. And this technology has been around for a long time. It just never has been used in this novel way. So this is with this special AFM microscope that gives you a 30,000 times magnification. And you can clearly see the disruptive force created by ClearStream's Penetrek technology. See how it was laid down on the surface? You have all these little spikes or swords that creates a a killing feel for the microorganisms. It can be applied in many ways. Here it is in the spray bottle. This is probably how you would use it in the spa. And you can just wipe your surfaces down. You can see a gentleman here wiping down the countertops, wiping down all the handles. Um, he's using a sponge for larger areas like in a bathroom or just wiping down the floors or um, this is actually a, a boat that's treating all the vinyl. So it works on any type of uh, substrate, any type of vinyl, plastic, metal. Here they're using what they call electrostatic sprayer, where they can deploy it for very large areas like locker rooms. And this is actually, it, it uh, is very safe. Uh, it, does, it is FDA approved for food contact. And here they're using it in a poultry barn. So they're using electrostatic sprayers to treat the entire facility, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, ever since they stopped using antibiotics uh, on animals, they've had to find other ways, healthier ways, to help keep the animals as healthy as possible. 
So I'm very happy to see that this is being used in food, food production as well. They also have a hand sanitizer. And this is very different from your typical hand sanitizers. As you know, if you've used alcohol on your hands, and especially being in the skincare industry, you know that this is not good for skin. You know that by using alcohol-based hand sanitizers, it's actually making things worse. It's creating dehydration in the skin. It's causing the skin to crack, dehydrate, crack, which creates all these little micro fissures in the skin. And your skin is your line of first defense. It's your first part of your defense for your immune system. And if that skin is compromised, if it's dry and cracked, you're going to have openings where uh, you have more possibilities for bacteria and viruses to enter into your skin. So the alcohol is actually creating more problems on skin. It's disrupting that natural microbiome. With the Impulse MediDefense hand sanitizer, it contains no alcohol. So it's using this novel technology and it actually binds to your skin and it feels fantastic. Your skin feels moisturized. Um, it's very soothing to the skin and it's keeping the skin intact with your, your natural microbiome and uh, much healthier for the skin. Clearstream products break down to very simple, safe ingredients, basically sand, wood, and nitrogen, which is not highly toxic to the environment, like some of our other biocides. So I wanted to show you this. This is an example that was done on a med spa. It was Plastic Surgeon's Office and Medical Spa down in West Palm Beach, Florida. Some of you may know Dr. Lavinia, and this was a, a six-week study that was done in his clinic. The study was conducted over six consecutive weeks. There were 40 data points that were selected, 20 were treated, and 20 were untreated so that they could compare. The AT, ATP swab is a unit that helps to measure microorganisms. So they use this in detecting uh, bacteria, germs, viruses on the surfaces. And so samples were obtained between six and seven uh, per week on the treated and the untreated control points. And then they repeated this the next day at the same time in the morning from six to seven in the morning. So this was repeated daily where they collected the data. And then the samples were compared to one another. So the following graph that I'm going to show you is the average percentage of growth and the average percentage of reduction in the bio load for the control and the test data points over a six week period. So here you can see after six weeks, there was a 50% increase in bio load. So overall, overnight increase was at 50%. Every night on this was the untreated areas. So the treat areas that were just treated with regular cleaning, regular biocide, overnight they had an increase by 50% in bio load. And the, on the side that was treated with the Clearstream products, and this was only treated once by the Clearstream products, the overnight reduction was minus 300%. So that shows you that it continues to work. It's continuing to work and reducing the bio load. So overall, when you're looking at this six week total, the bio load surface that was treated had half, less than half of the bio load than the surfaces that were just treated with regular cleaning and biocides. That had doubled, more than doubled, in the amount of microorganisms on those areas that were not treated.
So bringing this to your spa, you know, how to increase your profit through risk management, taking those extra steps to a safer, healthier environment for you, not just for you, your staff and your guests, you're also helping to increase client loyalty and bookings. If people know that you're doing these extra things, they're going to be more apt to want to, to book with your spas. And I have seen this over this, this last several months since this pandemic started. My clients that take extra effort in their sanitation are the ones that have been super busy and that stay busy. The other thing that this new technology offers you is there's also an opportunity for retailing these items and adding them to your offering. So how do you market this? Just word of mouth, you know, don't be afraid to talk to your clients about this. Explain your sanitation and your products and your protocols. And, and sometimes I think people think, oh, everybody's, you know, everybody's talking about this. They've heard about it so much. You know, I'm just so tired of talking about it. But believe me, clients want to be reassured. Every time they step through your door, they want to be reassured. So they don't mind hearing, you know, that you're taking extra steps in your sanitation, explaining to them the protocols that you're doing. If you take on this extra step with the ClearStream products, explaining how this is working and that you're going to take these extra steps to make things as safe as possible for them. And clients don't mind paying more. They appreciate when you explain this to them and they don't mind paying a little bit more to be safer and, and feel like they're in the cleanest possible environment. Also adding this to your website, making sure that you're advertising this on your website, explaining your protocols. You, if you have certain protocols like taking their temperature before they come, um, you know, texting before they come in through the door, reducing the amount of traffic that's in the reception area, all of those little things that keep the clients as safe as possible. Saying that in advance, you know, most everyone, especially new clients, when they're looking for a place, what's the first thing they do? They go to your website. So you have to make sure that your website is updated and, and that you're explaining all these new policies and procedures that you have in place to keep everyone as safe and healthy as possible. Your social media posts. Don't be afraid to talk about this. You know, helping to educate, putting some little blurbs in and, and educating on bacteria and viruses and, and what you're doing in your spa to really help. And in turn, clients will repost and they will tell other people about it as well. Using signage in your windows and within your spa, indicating when cleaning procedures have taken place, like this, this section has just been cleaned, you know, um, little making sure that you post a, around your spa and as an, an additional reminder to people of all the extra things that you're doing. So the future of aesthetics has definitely become more health and wellness oriented. We're taking a more holistic approach. All of these things are, are included now when we're helping clients with their skin, health, nutrition, exercise. And aesthetic pros are making their way into the sanitation business too and providing that extra care and sanitation and using the best possible technology. That's why I really wanted you to know that there are other things. There are better technologies out there that can help to support you. And additional retail potential. You know, not only is it going to help your clients uh, feel good about coming in and telling other people uh, how, all the latest technologies that you're using, but also you may want to sell through on some of these items that you're using for your clients. Like the hand sanitizers would be an easy one to have that, that don't harm the hands with alcohol. You have some other alternatives. Um, or some of the Penetrex that they could stay or take home with them as well. I gotta tell you, I use the Penetrex on my masks and I hear a lot of people have issues with their mask and saying that, oh, you know, they, they get odors from whatever they ate and they can smell it on their mask for hours. 
I don't get that at all because I treat my masks. I wash them. We also have a laundry detergent that I wash them with that has the antimicrobial in. But I also treat them with the Penetrex. I spray them down and let it dry. Now my mask is being treated long term. And so the odors are actually bacteria that cause the smell. And so it's constantly helping to kill that bacteria that's in the mask while I'm breathing. So I don't notice that at all. It stays fresher, longer, um, and uh, you, you, don't, you don't have that issue. So something else to, to consider using the product for is definitely on your masks. Staying current with the latest technologies and changes and regulations, you do need to check more often now with State Board uh, just to check and see if the policies have changed. I know everyone's, we're, we're waiting on the governors to give the final word and then check back with your State Board to see if there's been any changes or alterations in uh, your sanitation procedures. But this is an essential and very serious part of our future growth and success. So I hope that's given you some other ideas today and, uh, and I wish you all the best in health and wellness. And thank you so much for joining me today.